The lead is a German art song. Schubert wrote over 600 of such songs. However, his compositional style is only reflective of the lead by negation. Although his songs include classic traits such as tonal and motivic structure intertwined with poetic text, his music is far more free and far more dramatic in character. Composed in 1815, El König or El King is an example of a dramatic ballad. A dramatic ballad is based on two principal characteristics. One, the use of narrative text and control. Two, the representation of drama and a sense of the story as a whole. In this video, we will explore this work through the eyes of romantic individualism and its appeal to the audience. Examples of romantic ideals prevail in this work. The text by Goethe reflects a particular interest in folk poetry during the Romantic period, as it imitates the style, structure and subjects of folk balladry. More so is how Schubert supports the Romantic style in the music. In contrast to anemic chords and simple structure, from early lead composers such as Reichardt and Zelta, Schubert explores expressive techniques such as the richness of the piano accompaniment, chromaticism and nuanced melodies. But more identifiable and novel is Schubert's emphasis on the self. He explores one or multiple persona in his songs, where from the first to the last bar, the persona experiences a change in circumstance. Romanticism, originating in Europe near the end of the 18th century, was an intellectual movement that was driven by the impact of the Industrial Revolution, scientific rationalization of nature, and most importantly, the Age of Enlightenment. The Enlightenment dominated the world of ideas in Europe in the 18th century, and it emphasized on scientific methods of religion, in which many were against. Thus, why this period was characterized by its reaction against the Age of Enlightenment, where Enlightenment emphasized on scientific reasoning and Romanticism emphasized on one strong emotion, which would be referred to as individualism. Individualism became a rise of importance in which it highlighted the importance of identifying one's individual self-expression. The Romantic period was filled with composers who emphasized on their self-expression and individuality, which often reflected with their personalities. Schubert, even though born as a late Romantic composer, showed many Romantic aspects in his later works. One of his most famous works included Der Elkenich, a ballad written for two performers, vocalist and pianist. Der Elkenich tells an ominous story of a boy, his father and the Elkenich. It portrays a young boy who is courted by a supernatural being, the Elkenich. Feeling frightened, the boy repeatedly tells his father However, the father is unaware of the Elkenich, until the final stage where the Elkenich eventually seizes the boy. In the last stage, the narrator takes us through an explanation of the father's realization of the Elkenich, and when he finally arrives home, he finds out that the boy is dead. The piece opens in G minor and stays in the minor tonality for most of its duration, emphasizing this ominous and mysterious sense that is felt throughout. The scene depicts the father and son on their horse travelling home when the boy is haunted and captured by the Elkernig. Each person in the piece are characterised by their own individual motives that represent their perception on the storyline. These motives are heard throughout the accompaniment and expressive techniques employed in the vocal line, allowing for this notion of romantic individualism to be expressed. Romantic individualism is most prominent in the communication between the sun and the supernatural, being the Elkernig. As the boy is frightened by this being, his emotions are emphasised by the use of repeated sevenths, evident in bars 41 to 51. As the father is oblivious to the presence of the Elkernig, the son has the reoccurring theme of fear, as he is helpless against being lured into the supernatural world with the Elkernig. This is seen when the words Mein Vater, Mein Vater 
meaning my father, my father, are heard. This is repeated three times throughout the piece, in bars 72, 97 and 122. Each time the terror is heightened through the dissonance in the chord structure in the accompaniment. Despite the fear the son has of the Olkernig, the instrumentation when the Olkernig is introduced in bar 58 depicts otherwise, as it is set in B-flat major, contrasting the perception the son has on the being, as it appears as the Olkernig is no threat. The accompaniment here is playful and inviting, with a wide vocal range that lasts until bar 72, which is enough time to understand the Olkernig's desires. This soon shifts back to B minor, where the son clings to his father for protection from the Elkernig. By the final time the son cries out for help, the father realises he is too late to save his son. Here, the vocal line is simplified in the form of unaccompanied recitativo secco, enabling the drama to be increased. The piece returns to the home key G minor and the use of an abrupt, perfect, authentic cadence to conclude the piece which leaves the listener with just as enough shock as the father has over the death of his own son. The Oconic is a highly expressive piece that during the period of romantic individualism accurately explores all characters and their connections and fascinations with the supernatural world. It is important to consider the setting in which a piece of music is both composed and premiered in order to properly appreciate the audience's reception at its pinnacle of success. Schubert's Earl King, composed for a late classical and early romantic audience in Vienna, would have appealed to the fascination of the public towards the supernatural, who were, at the time, transfixed upon notions and entities beyond mortal means of communication. The idea of romanticism was also rising in popularity, within the perspectives of the public at the time. Morbid details were glorified and romanticized, concealed beneath euphemisms, giving even the most gruesome of literature a face of beauty. This concept is captured by the words of the Earl King, which are initially warm and inviting, sung at a higher and more mellow pitch, despite their twisted and profane underlying intention. At the time of Schubert's lead, concerts and salons were gradually becoming more accessible to the middle class, rather than being restricted to private venues conducted solely for the enjoyment of aristocrats. This change in societal structure demanded that performances draw upon themes that were more commonplace and relatable to the middle class. The thematic messages of death and the supernatural within Schubert's lead saw to its appreciation by a larger audience. The emergence of the Romantic period saw a rise to a greater emphasis of expressive and emotional coverage of literary and philosophical themes. In light of this correlation, a musical rendition of a well-received Germanic poem appeared to have resonated with the nationalistic pride of its Germanic audience. Schubert's decision to cover Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's Germanic rendition of the poem, rather than the Scandinavian original by Johann Gottfried von Herder, similarly caters to the nationalism of its audience. Goethe's Earl King aligned more closely with the Germanic portrayal of elves as a force of death rather than the original poem featuring their Scandinavian representation as simply magical spirits. The Earl King by Schubert incorporates supernatural topics and characters, prompts our imaginations to see imagery from nature, depicts extreme emotions, and conveys the impact of human love, loss, and suffering through modulations to different keys and repeated motifs in the accompaniment. The whole piece consists of eight stanzas, and almost in every stanza, it would modulate to another key. The first two stanzas, when the narrator, father and son speak, are set to G minor. When the Erking speaks for the first time in stanza 3, it modulates to the relative major, which is B flat major. A tuneful and lyrical melody with wide vocal range and diverse rhythms represent how the Erking is luring the boy with prospect of games and flowers. And when the Erking speaks for the second time, it modulates to C major, which is not related to G minor. However, it is considered as the home key for the audience, and this indicates how the Erking is trying to entice the boy to go with him again. This appealed to the fascination of the public towards the supernatural at the time.
The piano accompaniment starts with the 15-bar introduction that establishes the foundation of the accompaniment, the quaver triplet rhythm. The right-handed piano has chords in quaver triplets that represent the galloping horse and also create an agitated rushing mood. While the left hand has a rising triplet motif that increases tension, it could represent a gust of wind or the father's unspoken fear. This intensifies the shock of the audience when the child died in the end. Therefore, the thematic messages of death and the supernatural within the Erkin saw to its appreciation by a large audience. Oh.